Thanks very much for tuning in to my podcast. This was a new experience for me. And I was very fortunate to have a seasoned podcaster himself as my first guest, David Mouse. He's the owner and the podcast host of 10 Million in 10 Years podcast. He's done over 100 episodes. And beyond that, he's a seasoned business owner, owning both product-based businesses and service-based businesses. He now runs a company called Alt that helps with business coaching. And he is just an all-round really good dude. I often think... He seems very, very calm amidst the chaos um, of the world that we live in, and I feel that I've got a lot to learn from him. So thank you, David, and I hope you guys enjoy the podcast. I just wanted to say, yeah, why did you start your podcast initially? I started it primarily to document the journey of making the 10 million over 10 years, Mm -hmm. and I also quite like having conversations. I found that I'd have conversations with people about, oh, that'd be a good thing to have on file whether it's um, via like the interesting backstory or just people that I find interesting. Mm. And I know that if I'm going to sit down with them, I know the conversation can take a number of different routes and it would be just something of interest to have on Right, on to record. look back on. Exactly. Yeah, so you've archived all these interesting conversations with people you'd want to talk to anyway. Yeah, I mean, some have yeah. been more interesting than others. Right, but that's yeah. the That's the theory. What, what do you think makes a good one? In your mind, do you know when you're doing it? I think open-mindedness and I think someone that can there can be a legitimate conversation so it's not a QA, and a it's not an interview it's, yeah, it's more back of, and forth right it's back and forth it's somewhat un, unscheduled mm-hmm. unplanned um, yeah can you when you look back and do you feel like your way of interviewing or or having a podcast hosting it has changed is there anything you learned where you're like oh if I do this it flows way better is there anything like that I don't have an answer for that. No, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't really listen back to them. So Do you not? I couldn't tell you. Bro, to be honest, I'm, I'm guilty of it. Eh? To be honest, right? Anytime I post anything, I watch it like a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> <Really>? So it's <laughs> probably a little bit narcissistic, bro. But like, <laughs> I don't know. I can't help it, eh? What are you looking for? Uh, you just like watching yourself? I think, I, I think I'm just <laughs> pleased. I'm actually just pleased with it. So I'm happy? Like, oh, yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm real stoked with it. So it looks sick. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so why why 10 million in 10 years? Because we had a chat about this a while ago. And I remember you said um, it's something that you've always thought about. And then you had this guest on that kind of challenged you about it a little bit. And it got you thinking as to why is that my goal? Yeah. Have you had further thoughts around that? I've had a couple of pivotal guests. So one was um, a guest that has 10 million in net wealth. Yeah. He asked some really interesting questions and it was it was radically different having someone that has it and is speaking from a point of authority and yeah. actual, I've got it. Yeah, he's done it. I'm right? not guessing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've actually got yeah. it. Yeah. It's not what you think. Mm. And it wasn't that he was trying to discourage the idea or the concept. He liked the concept, but he just questioned some of the motivation behind it and dispelled some of my my guesses or my predictions so yeah what was your what was your motivation initially um the big thing that he dispelled was my idea of it equaling freedom and if i've got the money that it will give me options and that it'll be this like um state of being able to choose and have a lot more freedom over time Mm -hmm. and maybe mental mental freedom Mm -hmm. whereas his point of view was like look there's a lot of weight on my shoulders having this, right? Like I've got to preserve it slash grow it. And some of the things that uh, hold this value are quite high maintenance, you know, like looking around. It was in yeah. his place with the cars. Yeah. And so it was like, like these things all take maintenance. Like there's yeah. all a lot of work that goes mm. into this. Yeah, it's like when pe- people start a business because they want freedom. And it yeah, gives you exactly. the opposite, right? It's Very like all, similar, all of a sudden you don't get to switch off after five o'clock, right? Very similar. Yeah, interesting. So what's has your motivation shifted or, or like now what do you feel? It hasn't shifted. I would just say that it's it was that slap in the face that I really appreciated at the time. Right. Just to, to know that I don't actually want freedom. Like I want to actually grow something and I want to create something gotcha. around the challenge as well. And I think it's just made me pivot a little bit. Right, um, so it's like a fulfillment thing now? Yeah, I think it's yeah. more of a, um, it's it's a game first and foremost. Like I see it as a game. Yeah. And so I'm not overly serious about it. Totally. It's funny It's funny you say that because I was actually thinking last night about um, your emails and stuff, you know, your, your weekly emails. I read them all the time. You're the one person who sends email newsletters that I read. And 
I think it's because of how you've gamified everything. Like you say, key highlights this week, boom, boom, boom. Lessons I've learned, dun, dun, dun. It's literally like you've turned it into a game. Has that helped you a lot, do you think? 100%. I mean, even just like we were talking before about podcasting and how mm. I've started batching them, you know, batching the recording. Mm. Again, I've gamified it because I know that taking, you know, time to set up and get into the mindset of podcasting on an ad hoc basis that just didn't seem like fun to me. Mm. Whereas now, you know, like doing three, four, five in a row, it's it, it works. You and get your I, flow going. And I guess yeah. I get a dopamine hit from figuring that out. Right, yeah, sure. And do you, do you document all of this as well, all of what you figured out and all of your metrics? Like your, you know what I mean? Like a your XP points? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little bit, like partly through the newsletters, partly through within the podcast itself. Nice. So, yeah, yeah cool. I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm just a... Taking a, a non-traditional approach, I think if there was a way to make $10 million in a more linear, predictable fashion, I think that that would be a lot easier, but sure. it's not for me. Have, yeah, because have you figured out, like you've got this this goal, have you actually, have you figured out a roadmap of what you're going to do to get it, or I'm, are you still kind of just... I'm getting clearer and clearer every right. every day, ha every week. Yeah, 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 that's cool. I'm kind of I'm kind of in the same boat with the business, because like, it does feel blurry a lot of the time, I think. Mm -hmm. And like, as you encounter problems, you then figure it out. And you're like, oh, it has to go this direction. Um, so where where is it going for you that's going to get you to that point, do you think? Well, I was talking to someone else about goal setting and planning the other day. And the hardest part is actually just identifying that goal, I think. And so I've done that. I've achieved that. Mm -hmm. um, but to answer the question more specifically, the goal is to grow alt my consulting and coaching business to the point that it can be acquired for a sum of $10 million. Cool. A minority stake in it. Yeah, specifically. nice. Hopefully in years yeah. seven, eight, nine. Cool. Okay, no, that's on. I've, I've always thought like to get wealthy, like the way I see it is there's three ways. It's like there's building a, building a business and kind of selling it. That's kind of what you're talking about. And then there's like property or there's like other investments like stocks and stuff. I've always battled with is it better to be like a well-paid freelancer and invest money elsewhere to achieve that freedom or to build a business and they probably both have their benefits and cons. Why have you decided the, the business is the way that you would want to go to achieve that goal? It's it's purely based on my like of business. Yeah. I don't really like real estate. I don't yeah. like that for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I just feel that um, paper assets like stocks, like I guess you could probably day trade, but it, it's not like a cash flow type sure. thing for most people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've always I've always just enjoyed business. I've always loved mm -hmm. it, you know. And mm -hmm. so cool. it Fair just enough. seems natural to lean into that. Totally. Yeah. I'm listening, um, re-listening to a book at the moment called Twenty Four Assets, which is a really good book. I read it. You, that was you recommended that to me when I first met you. Real good book. Yeah. So he's talking about the two different types of business: the lifestyle business and the performance business. Mm -hmm. It's fresh in my mind. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's really relevant. Yeah. But yeah, essentially, he's delineating between these two different types of route that you can go down. Mm -hmm. Not that it's right or wrong, it's just deciding on what you want from the outset. Mm -hmm. And so listening to that this morning has really solidified my uh, desire to grow a performance-based performance business. Performance-based business yeah. over lifestyle-based business. Yeah, cool. So have you thought about like business structure or anything? Like how how would Alt look in year seven, eight, nine? Yeah, I mean, at that point it will be um, hopefully a multi-city operation. There will be... A combination of project and recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of guesswork. I totally. feel like I've gotten a lot clearer yep. over the last, say, six months, but there's still a lot of unknowns. Mm -hmm. um, at this stage, it is one-to-one -one coaching, business mm -hmm. coaching, mm -hmm. and so it is a bit of a jump to go from that to consulting. Yep. But so because you said mentioned the other day that you wanted to get a VA on, is that your next? An EA, yeah. EA, sorry. Yep. Yeah, yeah. so that's just electronic assistant uh, right executive assistant executive I guess assistant. they're like a fancy uh gotcha. a fancy pa yeah yeah right Personal so assistant. will they handle kind of all the admin tasks free you up exactly. to get more clients on and such exactly and then you'd probably cross a bridge where you have to hire someone to be able to do your job right as far as the actual coaching is somewhat that, yeah the yeah. plan is to get someone that's um a bit stronger in data and yeah financial so having someone that's um able to assist with the reporting and the management reporting dashboarding that type of right um project cool yeah yeah that's hectic man but yeah the assistant is the first hire yeah sure yeah you just you outsource the jobs that you can 
do quite simply, right? And that are repetitive. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, man. Via the book, um, Buy Back Your Time. Yeah. Another another. Favorite. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, I saw something on your Instagram story. Did you read out uh, how many books have you read this year? Uh, I think I'm up to about 23. Nice. Ish. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I can't read books, bro. They, no? Like, I, I enjoy them occasionally, but I just find it really challenging to sit down. I do like audio books, though. Yeah. You listen to any audio books? I do, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're mostly audio. I, I too, find it challenging to sit yeah. down. It's 75 hard that's allowed me to chew through the ones that I have. Yeah. So, you've just finished that, right? I have, well, yeah, I got to day 70. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good, bro. Uh, what was the toughest part of that for you? Um, the whole thing was actually really hard. I yeah. don't know if it was because it was in winter or if it was just because of like quite a you know, packed workload as well mm. versus when I first did it, I was a bit more cruisy in my sort of day job, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I found it quite, <laughs> quite yeah. hard this time. Yeah. I mean, I tried it once yes. and I think, I think you were the one that kind of told me about it. So yeah. I tried it and I said 28 days. Yes. Bro, I was, I was genuinely so depressed really? at the end of it. I, I, I only got to 28 days I don't, and I don't know if it's like a sugar addiction or something, man, but I was just like, oh, I really hated my life. You weren't, you weren't in a good place? No, nah, I was in a pretty bad place. Like I rate it. I rate it because I think once you do it, if you complete it, you'd yeah. feel awesome. And um, I have to admit while I was doing it in hindsight, I feel like that was probably one of the most productive eras of my life. Um, but yeah, man, I just... Yeah, we found it really, really tough. Yeah. Because what did you do for your diet and stuff? I did a list of excluded foods. So yeah. I had um, quite a clear list of what was okay and what wasn't okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't do anything crazy like you know, keto or carnivore or yeah. anything like that. It was just like a set of um, things that weren't allowed. So yeah, fair. nothing deep fried. Yeah. Um, no no sugar, no baked goods, no pies, no sister rolls, no mm. pizza. Mm. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing mm. like that. Yeah, I did um because I was talking to James Wallace about it and he said the first time that he did it, he just had one meal for everything. So I tried to do that. I just had chicken on vegetables and for dinner and for lunch every single day. And like I can't I can't eat it since for us. So I don't know how I don't know how he ate the one thing for seventy five days, man. It's yeah. pretty insane. I think it's one of those challenges that people either they either love it, they hate it, or they're unsure about it. Yeah. A lot of people especially in like say the fitness community tend to not like it they don't like what it brings out in people and i don't think they agree with it as in brings out as in like pers- um i think from a discipline pers- or maybe it's i think it's a misunderstanding if anything mm-hmm. i think they perceive it to be something that people do to say lose weight or to you know achieve a fitness goal where it's really not about that no it's, it's about, about the mental challenge right it's about committing to something and yeah. sticking with it yeah so yeah yeah i get that how do you feel now that you've that you kind of got that far on it like you feel yeah, good yeah really good yeah i feel incredibly grateful to be done with it i feel like it's a good reset like a good pattern interrupt that yeah for me it's probably something i'll do over a year yeah and i don't think it really matters if you complete it or you get three days in i just don't think it matters i think the fact is that you, you're doing it like i had a friend just recently do it for a week and that was what he needed mm. and that's what he what got him back in the, in in the, the groove, yeah right? in the game yeah. yeah sometimes it does feel like that fire leaves a little bit um so yeah one, one other thing i wanted to talk about was because when did you you said this 10 million in 10 years a wee while ago right how like have you always i should i should reframe this but like i have some friends who are very comfortable and like super content with their lives and i admire them in a way because they're like ridiculously happy and that's kind of the end goal um, I've always struggled to feel kind of happy going with the flow and I feel like you're the same in a way. Um, like you're very much here of like I need to make an impact. And why do you, do you know why that is? Why do you think that is that you're, you're inclined that way? If you are inclined that way. I think I've found my thing. I think I've found my like ikigai. I don't know if you've yeah, I've heard of, yeah, heard of that yeah. concept, but I think I've found that after. 40 years, just yeah. under 41 years. And I guess I'm lucky. I, I think there's people that are always searching for something and searching for that um, business or that career or that that calling, that challenge that they need to achieve happiness and to like mix those points of like 
you know, fulfillment, money, what the world needs. And I can never remember the fourth one, but there's a fourth one. Yeah, I think it's something like something that provides value, something that can financially support you and something that makes you feel fulfilled or something like that, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like I've found that and so... Found that in old. With business coaching? With business coaching, and yeah. I guess just that iteration of business, you know, like I've had yeah. seven different businesses and this is the one that ticks the most amount of boxes. Yeah. I guess as I enter into this new phase of like, you know, having staff again and growing something and I'm sure there'll be some moments where it's not as fun as what it is <laughs> yeah. currently now. Like yeah, bro. Out of, out of all the coaching sessions, that's probably the one recurring um, challenge that people people face staff face and is, stuff. is the staffing part of it yeah because yeah with your clients are they kind of all over the board in their business journeys or have you got kind of like yeah there's definitely some distinct cohorts like there's a younger-ish generation um younger pool of, mm -hmm. of clients so mm -hmm. they're at the beginning phases of um of growth you know like they're all doing quite well from a cash flow perspective but they're yet to embark on that um team building phase sure yeah uh, and then there's ones that are down the other end so they're looking to exit in right. the next few years uh and you know do, do different things so. yeah so are there so those are like common points that obviously people come to you for business coaching are there common problems i mean i know you've probably got different industries that you work in as a business coach are there common things where you're like it's kind of similar to this person it's a good question yeah i think i think as individuals as humans we all struggle with similar things i think we all struggle with doing that hard thing that thing that we know should we be know done. we should do but yeah. we just don't yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> right well you say it and it rings in here i'm like oh i know i know <laughs> he knows and, and, the, and the reason i know is that i i'm the same yeah i've got that same thing and yeah, so yeah. that's why i pay for business coaching yeah that's why i have a coach and that uh sometimes that that act of paying for someone to to identify that thing that you should be doing is weirdly what we need mm -hmm. but so i was in a session recently and i found myself uh maybe not complaining uh, i mean let's just call it what it was i was complaining about something mm -hmm. and he's like i think we talked about this last time i'm like far out you're right <laughs> you're, <laughs> yeah. you're exactly right <laughs> called out and, and then instantly the next day took action on it and that that's just the weird thing i think about humans is like we do tend to resist difficulty sometimes mm. not always um we're willing to lean in. Totally, yeah. I definitely feel that. And so I don't know if there's common problems, but there are definitely unique, unique. Uh, the, we all struggle with the same thing, which is doing the hard thing. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what I would say. Why do you think? Why do you think we struggle with that? Well, I think it's because we're designed like, yeah, evolutionary to avoid discomfort. Like discomfort equals danger, and right. We we don't want to. And we don't want to risk our lives. Sure. Because in our heads, that's what we've linked to that hard thing. Totally. And so if it's firing someone or, you know, restructuring, as you'd probably call it, it's it's the fear of, um, you know, that fear of rejection or that fear of, like, conflict or mm -hmm. the fear of not being liked. Yeah. Yeah. I um, Yeah, it's funny you say that. Like, I feel like there's been points where I've had – I've known I need to do something – but it's not even necessarily hard. I sometimes feel like there are things that I need to do and I don't do them because I know that it will progress the business. Yeah, so it's a <laughs> sabotage thing. It's kind of like sabotage. Yeah, it's weird. That, is, that com is that common? It is common. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of that too. Like right this second, just to give you a real life example, I've got this bigger event that I've been scheming. I've been talking about it. Mm -hmm. It's penciled in the calendar. Mm -hmm. But yet have I released tickets for it? No, Jack, I have mm. not. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why not? <laughs> Why yeah. have I not done this? Because you know how to do it as well, oh, right? I know exactly exactly how, how to do, do it. it. Yeah. yeah, I go to Humanitics and I select the option and I yeah. fucking press the button. <laughs> yeah. But why have I not done this? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting like that. It eh? is. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're also like pre-programmed to operate at a certain like At a set level, right? Do you think we decide that level for ourselves or do you think us growing up and everything our environment decides that for us maybe yeah, yeah maybe it's a good question because i remember starting uh this business i had a point and i was like i'm pretty happy with that i haven't got much further than that because right. i'm kind of like oh that's my baseline ah, and okay. i'm quite happy sitting at my baseline i'm like i sh yeah, shouldn't be doing this you know yeah yeah i wonder if there's a way that we can reprogram ourselves well i think there's a few ways one is to hang around people that have different baselines 
And True. so it normalizes bigger numbers, bigger growth mm -hmm. more. I mm -hmm. think that's one way. And I think the other thing is to find accountability, whether it's through a third party or even just friends, you know, like I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. if, if there's something that I'm uh, procrastinating on, I'll just message some guys and be like, if I don't do this by this, then yeah. I, I'll, Social accountability. I'll buy the next dinner kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's, again, going back to that idea of gamifying and yeah. creating a game around it. Yeah. I saw something on one of your emails lately about, um, I think you did a podcast with someone who was talking about he does these set things each day. One, one oh, thing was the, an ice bath. The Elliot list. The Elliot list. So <laughs> what, what was, the, can you talk me through that? He's going to love this. Yeah. <laughs> I just ran into him before yeah. this and yeah. he mentioned that he heard, heard his um, shout out on the podcast. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I should do the, um, do the rounds. This is, uh, is going to be my next big break. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I liked it. So because what was ice bath? What else was it? Uh, he's just got a checklist of say 10 or so different things that he looks through if he's feeling a bit off. And so it's like exercise, ice bath, sauna. Has he had some good conversations? Has mm. he been outside? Mm. Um, how's the diet been? Has there been alcohol? Has there been, um, yeah, is he, is he journaled? All those types of fundamental things that we can totally. quite easily look through. Right, analyze ourselves and be like, this is probably why I'm feeling yeah. a bit shit. Yeah, and then you yeah. can identify if there is one that stands out. Be like, mm. oh, yeah, mm. yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, I haven't, haven't exercised lately or, yeah. you know, yeah. I've had a shit chat this morning. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know, like... I, I was around a very, you know, draining person or something. Yeah. Something like that. Totally. Yeah. yeah, I get that, man. Yeah. That's interesting. So the Elliot list. The Elliot list. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to him. I, I, I just, you know, like, I guess this last, um, say, year or so of my life, like, I've just learned and adopted a variety of different tools so that um, depending on the situation, I can hopefully, like, lean into my tool bag and pull something out yeah. based on what the problem is. Yeah, definitely. Because I think we all yeah, struggle at times from either lack of productivity or mood or, or whatever, you know. Mm. Um, sleep is just this common thing that keeps coming up. Totally, yeah. Sleep quality. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you monitor your sleep quite a lot? You have that bracelet, eh? Or, or uh, the, the ring. ring. The yeah. ring. Is yeah. that pretty good? I got the ring. Yeah, the ring's mm. helpful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just another tool, another reference point. Sure, yeah. I find that it's, it can be misleading, like it can be harmful in that like if say you wake up and you're feeling good, but then you see oh, it's shit sleep yeah, yeah. like, I'm gonna have a fuck? shit I'm day. <laughs> yeah. I was feeling good before I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can go either way. Totally. Do you I've seen some people they get real intense with it, they only have red lights in their bedroom and things like oh, that. Oh really? No. Yeah, have you seen that guy? He um he's trying to reduce his age. I have, That's yeah. his life mission. It's cool. It's very cool. Yeah, it's cool. Have you seen his latest part of it? His no. latest iteration, which is building a community around this, uh, which I'm very keen to see what he does. But essentially, he's activated his audience globally and created like communities in different cities, different parts of the world mm -hmm. that are all sort of on board with the same mission. Mm. So that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so he's got a bunch of people kind of taking the same supplements yeah. and everything. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess just um, interested and in, like sharing sharing the journey. Yeah, which, totally. You know, to some extent, a smaller extent, um, that's similar to what I'm doing. Yeah, Right, definitely. and that's like with these events, that's been cool, the podcast, the coaching, it's all sort of yeah. tying in together. Yeah. Do you want to talk to me a little bit about your events? Because I, I, you're doing them with James Wallace, eh? Uh, some of them, yeah. yeah. Like I've done um, events for the last year and a half or so. I started doing them with a, a friend early last year, so 2023. And man, they've just like morphed into this quite distinct part of the business. Mm -hmm. Never would have predicted it. They've morphed into the business, yeah, as in the top top end of the funnel, or laid it down. Uh, all all parts actually. Yeah. yeah, I guess like top to mid, if you yeah, want yeah. to use the funnel yeah. metaphor. But um, yeah, I've just been really surprised by them. So what what happens in those events? Yeah, so there's two different types, um, and a third when I uh, you know face my demons and launch the tickets for the October event. But yeah. the two different types currently: are the monthly networking lunch, yeah, which is focused around meeting new people, hanging out. Mm -hmm. There's a speaker that will speak for a few minutes at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And yeah, pretty pretty like, pretty like low key, like nothing mm -hmm. too fancy. Mm -hmm. But I just like bringing together like-minded people. Yep. A lot of crossover between the IHF membership and mm -hmm. coaching clients. Yep. And then like a few people that have entered into the orbit as well. Right. And yeah. then the newish type, which are the breakfast ones that are more of an education focus. 
So I'll get another speaker facilitator and then we'll cover something that they're particularly strong at. Right. So whether that's marketing or systems or mm -hmm. culture or yeah. whatever the case may be. Yeah. And because you guys just book, booked out the last two, right? Yeah. yeah so Is that expected? Uh, I felt like it was going to be pretty easy to book out one just mm -hmm. based on the capacity being like 18. Yeah. It's not like a huge number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then, you know, to book out the second one, that was... That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was, then, was confirming that you're providing some pretty good value there, 100%, right? And, you know, like the example with ticketing on these events, that was something that I struggled with, just like picking a price point and, you know, just like that imposter syndrome got in the way. and Totally. Just, uh, yeah. It, it, yeah, I'm really happy that I followed through and just chose a number and, and mm. ran with it. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I've got a third one with James nice. later this month. It's on. It's on. Yeah, it's yeah, on. I mean, it's, it's so cool because I really find that with the right people in your environment, you can you can just do so much more. Totally. And when you've got someone like James that's like, yeah, I'm keen. Like, let's mm. just do it. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's not like messing around. It's not like, oh, I can't do this. Straight day. to it's it. It's just eh? like, yeah. yeah. It's like 7 a.m. Just take a day. It's easy. I'm, yeah. I'm going to be there. Very cool, man. Yeah, so. Nice. Good uh, outcome. I um I also wanted to ask, bro, because I remember like you were previously at a job for a bit, yeah. Um, and I remember we had a chat, and, and we were you saying I'm not feeling that fulfilled, um, and you made this I think quite brave jump, and so from there to here, yeah, we, we were just talking about it before. It's been nine months, did you say about? Give or, or take, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it hasn't been that long, but you progressed quite rapidly. Yeah, is that the start you were? flipping things as well yeah was that kind of part of that progression transition yeah, yeah. That transition yeah. yeah yeah it's crazy to look back on that it's it's hectic right um and during that transition for you as a business coach and growing your clients and such yeah what were the real were there any plateaus that you had to figure out and get over um i mean i've had jobs over the years right not often like probably 10 percent of my time's been in an employee oh, role yeah. oh really or yeah. a contract so role. you've always had that Business. the bug <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, 100%, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's definitely not foreign to me yeah yeah, yeah. I, I feel a lot more comfortable being self-employed than yeah. employed yeah but um the transition out of my last role was um yeah it's quite interesting just in that like i had sufficient runway to to figure it out like it sure. wasn't like i needed to go straight from like that to making money on day one yeah which was nice yeah but yeah definitely um took some wild wild things to, to try and make cash flow yeah. in that window. Like yeah, there was yeah. flipping cars. There That's got to be quite fun though, bro. I like, mean, it was somewhat fun, but I look back on that and just think, far out, that's crazy how that it, was it's chapter. Yeah, it's, and it's kind of funny how you can look back and you connect the dots quite easily. Because mm. like, I, I did this, I did a similar thing where I was did flipping for a bit and then I got bit up in an alley by these two really? guys. Yeah, trying to. Jeepers. I went to Car Boy. Oh, just, well, this is your first yeah, challenge. Yeah, to sell a phone at like 10 p.m. <laughs> and just got the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> no way. Yeah, so I stopped doing it after that, bro. But and then it leads to like other things. And I started surf coaching, and then that it's just it's crazy how you learn skills in all different elements that yeah. then build. The, yeah, build it's what interesting, you're at. right? Just yeah. building that like meta knowledge that's stacking right all yeah. the time. Like just yeah, increasing. it's like um you know Alex Hormozzi. Uh, he says like one plus one equals like six. And so he was saying like, if you're really good at math, that's awesome. But then if you get really, really good at understanding like business finances, mm. it's not like you're just good at these two separate things. Your skill of those two things is worth way more yeah, than like their that. constituents. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do like that. I um, I didn't get beaten up in a car park, but I <laughs> bought these AirPods off uh, Marketplace, which was a big mistake in hindsight. But, yeah. you know, you, you just... And it's again, it's crazy to think that was only about a year ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, bought these AirPods. Sure, they were real. Yeah. Like, validated them, <laughs> yeah. like, peered them, checked the serial number. Yeah. Like, they got some good fakes. Far from, out, man. Yeah. Like, they got some real good fakes. It was only when I went to go and flip them that the guy that bought them, he's like, no, nah, these, aren't, these aren't real. There's some like deep, deep embedded tech that doesn't line up. Yeah. Right. The serial number doesn't line up with the country of manufacture. Oh, some, some right. Yeah. Yeah, stuff, yeah. Right. Yeah. It makes you think though, right? When the fakes get that good, where are these like authentic products getting manufactured? Most likely same sim factory. The same factory. Maybe, very right? similar. Yeah, yeah. Probably bro. Just wild. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, to go from, from that last role into what I'm doing now, it seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah. But I guess also though, if I zoom out, like 
it was such a good move to to go down this current route totally and i've got to give credit to a um counselor that i was working with at the time who mm-hmm. suggested it yeah so she you know asked the question have i ever considered business coaching mm. i'm like i don't really feel like i am qualified for that mm. so what are you talking about I'm like how could you be any more qualified yeah she challenged your imposter syndrome yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. yeah and so i guess being a believer in the industry and like having had many coaches over the years it's been cool to be able to apply a lot of what I've learned. And totally. And you've been in a lot of different industries. Am I right in saying yeah, that? Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So what are there, are there specific skills that you can think, oh, I learned this then? Any hard lessons? I mean, I think the last major lesson was learned just through like, as, as we say earlier, doing those hard things, right? Like during a restructuring situation just, yeah. just being decisive and mm. not messing around mm. um yeah i mean it's hard it's probably one of the harder things i think in business is doing that no, I th- yeah yeah i've um, had to let want let someone go before and it was it was tough bro yeah it's not enjoyable yeah. no it's no, horrible it, it feels horrible yeah um you do you find with having a daughter yeah because i'm kind of I'm, I'm going through this weird transition now of like my motivation has always been like i want to get a, a mansion and a Lamborghini and right. have all this money, like yeah. quite materialistic, you know, and, yeah. and it's okay. It's always motivated me. And now I'm kind of feeling like, well, my my goal of what my life would look like is very different. Did you ever go through something like that when you had your daughter of, well, my motivation for what drives me is changing? Um, not so much. I mean, I've always been searching more for the happiness type thing or and when I say happiness I really mean fulfillment right I really mean okay guy I mean I'm a huge fan of material goods as well like I'm definitely not some monk that wants to just yeah. do good in the world right, right. yeah I yeah. do like nice nice things and I think it's like not to be discouraged either mm. um, I, I think it's just this constant process though of like when you're at the very beginning of your journey you probably just want those certain things just for the sake of it right where it's like what everyone else has got like you've got no idea what what it actually entails and yeah. i think like doing that podcast that i mentioned earlier was was quite eye-opening just because you've you've got someone with all this stuff and it's like it's more of a burden than that like it's still fun like mm, doesn't make you happy necessarily no, no it definitely doesn't make you happy and i guess it's like getting anything new right like when you get a new iphone it's kind of cool but it the novelty wears off it wears off real quick yeah yeah, yeah. so what kind of brings you your fulfillment, do you think? Well, I think cliche as it may sound, but, you know, helping people and see other people grow is pretty fulfilling. Like right. Seeing some of the clients make the decisions and the doing the work that they've done over the last few months, it's pretty awesome to see how, like, you know, you, you do one thing, you, you do the thing, and then it sort of does have a massive positive ripple effect down the stream yeah so that's pretty cool yeah yeah that's that's hugely exciting and i think like you said it does just sometimes take that just outside perspective right yeah 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 i think also like the uh effect of doing like you know 140 or so different episodes on the podcast that's like been quite validating yeah so actually sticking to something and going the distance that's been really Mm. really cool i think that gives me a lot of inner joy and satisfaction yeah totally um, for for on the podcasting like for me starting this what you got any advice or anything that you struggle with and then learn something that you could pass on i think it just comes down to enjoying it like you've got to enjoy it like not for what it can bring you but for actually the process of doing it mm. i think that any difficulty will be outweighed if you if you actually enjoy like it. doing it yeah yeah totally so you quite enjoy it mostly yeah i mean yeah. My, I, I like some of them more than others yeah you know, if i'm honest but yeah so what makes what, well, i mean we kind of talked about it before but what makes it enjoyable like what's a what's a good one i think someone that's open-minded someone yeah. that is it just an interesting person like yeah. i find them interesting right um yeah i find someone that wants to be on the podcast for non-selfish reasons as well like mm. they either want to be there to uh, you know, to have fun in some way or mm-hmm. if they want to tell their story but in a mm-hmm. in a nice way that's like... Sure. Do you think that, that like if you enjoy that podcast and that person is like that, that also equates to the success on the ranks 
Or do you uh, think they're different? I think that's different, yeah. I think yeah. there's a variety of unknown reasons why the ranking is the way it is. Mm. You know, their network, um, it's fucking random algorithms. I don't yeah, know. right. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess at the point where I'm at now, it's not like there's huge amounts of data to, to work with, to right? To work with. Yeah, exactly. sure. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know what makes a good podcast. Yeah. There's no real formula. Yeah. I've had some really enjoyable ones that I, um, you know, just didn't expect that from. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. Um, yeah, that's interesting, man, because I've, I've, uh, you're obviously gaining some ground with it as well. I was, I think I told you the other day that I, um, one of my friends was on a plane Never met you. Oh, wow. But saw your face and was like, oh, that's the guy that does the podcasting. <laughs> and so I think there's also probably a lot of power as well doing it in Christchurch where it's a very small community, right, of people in this in the space doing things. Yeah. It's quite nice because we can all lean on each other as well. It is cool, I mean? yeah. yeah. It, it is nice that there's no um, – yeah, it's not very crowded, right? Like there's not many that have gone over, say – 50 episodes right no yeah totally um there might be i mean there might maybe there is like, yeah yeah i guess just they might be super niche but yeah sure yeah interesting yeah it is interesting yeah it's a cool platform though it's a it's a cool medium like i i do enjoy i enjoy it and i i will keep going with it yeah cool um i also wanted to ask bro this is more of a technical question with your um like business coaching and stuff have you got any certain softwares or or anything that you use or that you recommend to people? I mean, because I know they're probably all very like specific. For, for right? like productivity or for productivity or organizing or systemizing yeah. or creating processes. Yeah. I'm a big fan of technology and, and using it to our advantage. I find that for coaching, I find it's best to use like the simple more simple the better. So like mm. just using Google Docs. Yeah. Yeah. Google Docs, Google Sheets. Yeah. Um I find that the ones that I've developed for coaching have been um, very primitive, but also just like you can't argue with them. Like you can't argue that it's too hard to complete. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah. Um, in terms of other platforms, I mean, all the all the big ones. Um, I'm curious myself. Like I've just um, upgraded to Premium Chat GPT, which has been interesting. Oh yeah, huge fan y of that. Yeah, it's it's kind of creepy, eh? It's pretty wild. Mm. I'm only about a few weeks into it, but mm. yeah crazy it's uh, i feel like with that like you can build systems around chat gpt to make your life easier do you know what i mean like if you just have the software without the process behind it that you're going to use it for it's not as helpful but like yeah you kind of have to build it into your processes rather than using it as a process yourself i think yeah i just found it interesting how i'd been using the free one haphazardly but yeah. i really enjoy the thought that it could be a really powerful tool yeah and so that's why i forced myself to pay the money so therefore in paying the money, money you're going to use it i want to use it exactly <laughs> yeah. so it's like a way that again yeah. i've gamified it yeah so that i'm going to use it yeah and i guess through that i've just been experimenting and seeing what it's capable of totally um with your business coaching so how does that have you got a set thing that you do each time with people have you got a process yeah it's really yeah. clear it's really um really uh Productized, so yeah, weekly or fortnightly sessions, yeah, um, all in person, yeah, hour to an hour and a half long, yeah. Um, we base it around goal setting, strategic planning, right? Yeah, so it's all around goals and what's happening in that individual's business to get there, right? And then do you kind of break it down and sort of figure out key things that they need to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's part um it's part practical it's part like what what is that hard thing yeah it's part mindset like what are you mm -hmm. working on like what are you struggling with mm -hmm. um i tend to apply a very well-rounded or like holistic approach i guess yeah meaning we talk about fitness and yeah lifestyle all elements things. right yeah. yeah rather than just spreadsheets because mm. you have you ever sacrificed your fitness for business not so much mm. i'm not no has that do you think has that been a strong move? I think it's been an accidental thing. An accidental I think some thing. people tend to be really uh, wired in a way that they will be more tempted to lean into business mm -hmm. harder than say fitness. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's just a form of being out of kilter. Yeah, because um, you feel you feel you you get more done right if you're feeling good in your body. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I think it's like one of those. I, I don't know that saying exactly, but it's like that Navy Seal like slow is good. Good as 
fast, no, slow is smooth, smooth is fast or something like that. I don't know. But it's basically like when you're in that flow state, mm. when you're at the right amount of like busyness. Right. You're just getting things done almost on autopilot, right? Very much so. It's yeah, like, um, yeah. it's not frantic. It's just like a calm, like just productive tempo. Do you feel like you, you, do you, feel like you found that? Pretty much, yeah. 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 I'm, I've, never, I've never felt that no. <laughs> myself. I no. wish I, I know the feeling that you're talking about. Yeah. I've heard rumors. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have experienced it at times though, right? I don't you, know, bro. I no, mean, like, not. well, I've to be honest, man, like I really, really struggle with uh, – working in a, in a way that I think is healthy right. because yeah, if I come in and I say oh, I'm going to do nine to five today of just working, I'll probably be kind of unproductive to be honest. Um, if I could fix that, I would love to fix that. And then other times I'm like, okay, I'm feeling super productive and I'm going to work nonstop for ages. And I'm always in two minds about it because I'm like, well, if I could structure it and systemize it so that I work X amount of hours per day at this rate of intensity, mm. I can really predict where I'm going and get the right things done. But then I heard this thing, it's like if you are hunting, it's okay. Like you hunt to eat, you go really, really hard and then you rest mm -hmm. until you're ready to hunt again. Um, but I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, I think that there's a couple of things that you could probably consider doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one would just be um, breaking that time up, like, that's a pretty big overwhelming amount of time mm. in my mind at least, mm. right? Like if I was to totally. show off and be like, all right, you got to like, I guess it depends on how you've broken it down as well, right? Like mm. is, is that a combination of editing, admin? It's probably, yeah, probably everything to be honest. Everything. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. running around, shooting, editing on the phone. Got it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting as well when you do an analysis of like your time and energy. Mm. So if you say document for the two-day period like, Where's the, where's the time going? Yeah, what I've heard you doing that. Time audit. Yeah, that's so what you're the saying. time and energy audit yeah. is like really handy to look back on Yeah, and sort of look at the amount of tasks that you're doing that give you energy, what's sucking the energy. Yeah. And I think also that cliche of like what you can measure, you can manage. Yeah. So if you look back on that list after two days, it, there's probably going to be some – you know, red flags there. There's probably mm. going to be some things that's like, that's crazy. Yeah. Why was I doing that for Why three was hours? I doing that? Yeah. And even <laughs> just the process of recording it, you'll you'll probably notice it in light in real time. Totally. I mean, bro, like I look at I looked at my screen time for the first time the other day, and I was like, shit. Yeah. 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 There's some there's some fundamental truths that we can't argue with. I right? know. Like, like I screen know. time, bank balances. There's some things that just yeah don't have any wiggle room. Do you think we can get away from it? Screen time. Screen time. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. How? How? Yeah, well, I think just a measuring it, mm -hmm. you know, like having awareness for it's the first step. You know, how does that may be to stand sometime? But I think replacing it with other things. Mm -hmm. So whether that's, um, yeah, I think I think you've just got to have like an overall plan that helps you prioritize things. Mm -hmm. So like if you know that you want to get to a certain point, and you'll just quickly be able to tell if that screen time's contributing toward that larger goal if you're fully invested in it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm no expert, but I feel that when you start paying attention to the screen time, that's one of those things. It will like, kind of automatically go down if you're conscious of it. Doesn't feel good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was talking to my friend a while ago, and we thought about doing like a month of buying an old warehouse Nokia phone. Yeah. And like you can use your phone in the work work hours or whatever, and yeah. then you have to leave it at work or something, and yeah. then just use the Nokia. But the thing is, like, I'm like I'm personally, I'm so reliant on my phone now. Yeah. Like, oh, if people need something. They'll message at 10 at night or something. Do you mm. know what I mean? Yeah. And so I can't help but worry if I were to separate myself from s my screens, my business would mm. suffer. Yeah. Do you have that battle? Or yeah, like? they are definitely integrated. And I've toggled going off and on it. Like, say, I've, I've done like months off Instagram and just used the desktop. But yeah, you're right. Like, as, as you say, there's definitely a level of communication that happens through there. So it's really mm. hard to. Mm -hmm. You know, like it is a legitimate tool, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think when you've got that bigger overarching goal that you're working toward, I find that the screen time just doesn't even become an issue. Yeah, because you're you're busy with the right types of tasks. Right, you don't not, have time to be scrolling exa on Instagram. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I sometimes I'll, I'll find time. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, and I'm not perfect, by the way. Like I'm definitely yeah. not coming at this from a pedestal. Yeah, like I am no, definitely no. not. Uh, fully dialed in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially on the weekends and like at night time. Like I think. 
what I will do going forward is just put the phone in a different room. Yeah, right. After hours. Like, I don't yeah. think that when I'm at home, there's a need to be. Yeah. I think it's it's brutal though because I th- these these apps are are programmed to literally capture our attention and they hold are. us in there, you know? Yeah. I saw something yesterday and I was talking about like how you get those little Instagram notifications of someone posted a new reel. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't care. I don't need that. But I still click on it. And then next thing you know, I'm like, I'm like, fuck, I've been looking at my phone for five minutes and I didn't even know that I picked it up. Yeah. I'm like, that's how you know that these are these are like in my mind, they're weapons. Yes. They are social weapons. Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah, it's, I think I think just having some again, back to the toolbox analogy, like having some tools that you can use. So for example, putting it in a different room, um, replacing it with like journaling or something, or reading or um, just interrupting the pattern so that you're not in that mindless scrolling phase and mm. And as I say, I definitely am not perfect, but... No, but you're aware of it, I, right? I'm getting better. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't got the... I don't even look at the screen time reports anymore because I don't find that it's a problem. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's good, bro. Yeah, it's just... It's tough, man. Um, yeah, and I think also replacing it with creating as well. So, like, if you do find yourself that you're consuming more than you're creating, I find that's another antidote. Mm. So, if you find yourself in the vortex, yeah, just, like, think about what kind of content you could mm. post quickly right mm. like can you do a quick instagram post you're because you're getting quite into the content game is that right yeah um, yeah what's yeah. your have you got a kind of an overarching strategy no, with that not at all <laughs> just post as much as you can pretty kind much. of thing yeah. yeah nice yeah i mean the podcast is pretty methodical yeah but in terms of other content it's pretty loose totally yeah yeah have you got a set place because you're in the base in the loft right yeah yeah is there like a set a place there where you can film quite easy yeah yeah the meeting rooms are pretty good for both filming and yeah. podcasting. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I heard some creators talking about like creating systems to help you film, like having a set. So it's just like, it's like, for example, having the studio here, it's not, there was a little bit of setup at the start, but it's not too bad. Um, as advice to, if I was carrying this all around, it would take me like two hours to set everything up. So it's like having a set place where you can just film individual pieces of content. So you can just, Really get the ball rolling. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've started doing this thing now where when I go and I meet a client, I film an interview with the client each time. Yeah, I saw some. Yeah, yeah, it's just because then it's like part of the process, and then they use it, and they're like, they post my face everywhere. That's clever. Yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, and it's just like becomes part of the system. Yeah, Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I think um that's super super clever. Like just stacking those habits together is is really Mm. logical Mm. like i do that with a lot of other things but not so much content so Mm. um yeah i love that maybe that's how you got into the uh, top 10 list maybe yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, it's funny like to be honest right because i i quite admire james up the road like i think he's done awesome things and so like he's always he's always above me on that list but i'm always like at least i'm on the list <laughs> you are you know oh yeah you, you make are. it fun for people though right like that's yeah. the thing do people like like message you when they see that they're on the top James 10 stuff yeah it does. <laughs> every time i don't yeah. know if anyone other, other oh, guests bro. care about it but oh bro i care about it <laughs> <laughs> it's cool though like i really like the anniversary idea as well like doing the episodes a year afterward oh right yeah so totally the initial episode x is like a time capsule yeah where it's like okay you you know like there is definitely content that you will look back on and be mm-hmm. like oh yeah that's that's the stage i was at totally making. there might yeah. be some facts but you can get a feel for it yeah and then you do one a year after and it's like oh wow yeah growth yeah and it's probably quite interesting for people as well because they they see what they thought was going to happen and then how what they did was either so similar to what they thought was going to happen or so drastically different. A lot can happen in a year. Oh, yeah, totally. So if you can make some predictions, especially in that first one, how fun to look back on it. Yeah, 100%. I actually, bro, I do this thing where I write letters to myself every Uh, year. Oh, cool. And then I read them on uh, camera. Yes. Um, Oh, very cool. Yeah. I'm always super upset. <laughs> like <laughs> with the predictions or with the result. <laughs> ah, okay. Like I read my one last time on camera and I was reading and I was like, ah oh, shit. Like I'm nowhere near anything that I wanted. Ah, um, okay. But then I don't know if that's just because I'm setting the bar too high or I expect too much of myself or it's just I haven't worked hard enough. You just mm. don't know whether it was you at the time that was flawed when you were writing the note or you up to that 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 year that yeah. was flawed. I've done something similar with a friend uh, every Christmas day we do that. We 
uh, have like a letter or a set of goals that we've written from the previous year mm. and then we open that up and then write new ones for the following year. Nice. But I found that with that it wasn't it, it wasn't necessarily effective. It was more of a game rather than a you know, strategic tool. Yeah, right. You probably need to have smaller time increments for it Absolutely. to be strategic, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. How often do you check in on your goals? Every day. Every day? Multiple times per day, yeah. 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 So you must break your goals down to the tiniest metrics, right? The tiniest increments. Sort of, yeah. I've yeah. got like monthly ones, I've got quarterly ones, right. yearly, but yeah, I'm really keeping a close eye on them. Totally. That must be a, quite a big undertaking, right, to map that out. Well, I've just made it easy for myself. So like using um, the iOS system, just having notes, having both the notes and Google Docs. So like it's easy-ish to, uh, super easy to access, Yeah. right? Yeah. The notes app is so easy. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I guess the beauty is that with every coaching session, you know, that I'm talking about goals every day, right. day in, day out. And so yeah. I get to apply what I've learned from clients. And yeah, setting goals is probably a skill in itself. Well, I think it is, yeah, yeah. I think it really is. And I think a lot of people potentially overthink it and don't set goals for that reason, that they, they want to get it right. Mm. But my mindset around that is just to, just to do it and mm. just don't worry about it. Like mm. you, you might get it right, you might get it wrong, but... I think if you don't have a specific course, you're, you're sort of vulnerable to drifting and mm. not being focused. 100%. So. When, when, when to pivot and when to push? Oh, that's a really good question. Mm. Yeah, I mean, when I had my agency about, you know, three years ago, I guess I shut that down. Mm -hmm. That was a really defining moment. Mm -hmm. I got to the end of the year and I was like, all right, I've been doing this six years now. I'm not loving it i'm pretty stressed out i'm not like enjoying it mm -hmm. the enjoyability factor is super low mm -hmm. and then i got the financials back and i'm like nah yeah that's shit. yeah yeah i could tolerate yeah. one of these two things yeah but, but not, not both. both yeah yeah and yeah. so like i could have also kept on going that would have been the the other option right mm. and so it was actually through um working with another coach that i made the decision to shut it down mm. but yeah it's a really good topic and i think it's something that mm. people should talk more about mm. because i think it's really easy to just continue doing something that's not serving you yeah just uh, that's the pride or ego yeah. or sunk cost fallacy mm. or whatever that's the fear though as well hey you know 100 percent. because you, you yeah you put your heart and soul into it yeah and what if it's all a waste of time i know you know? I know, but then you got to define. I guess what is a, what do you mean by waste of time? Like the risk is that all of the work that you're doing is not going to be worth anything, right? But um, I heard him say that the thing that you're building isn't the business; it's you. Like the skills that you learned in that six years of that agency has now built this. I guess so. I think that regret isn't talked about enough and i think a lot of people gloss over it mm -hmm. i think everyone's like do you regret the agency i regret staying in it as long as i did did yeah. you when did you know um because like, well, there's a different there's a different question of when did you know and when did you act right yeah i think if i'm honest with myself probably probably at around that year like four mark i think yeah i went through like a big ramp and like hiring I sunk quite a bit of money into it and I was attempting to build something and I wasn't afraid to to sort of throw some money at it mm. I think at that point though um I guess it was COVID actually that probably would have been the the, the time mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. there was that that phase of growth and then COVID came along and I probably should have just kept, shut it down straight after COVID never really came that would have been like the hard reset that yeah I sure needed. yeah that was um, the universe. Yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was the universe. <laughs> Shut down the business. I'm shutting down everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think I had this wild chat with someone the other day about regret and how it's such a taboo word, right? Like yeah. everyone's like, oh, it's not a regret. It's a lesson. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> we can't have regrets. Like, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Right. It's fine to regret things. Mm -hmm. But learn from it simultaneously mm -hmm. and don't do it again. So, okay. So with that in mind... What did you learn from it? Cliche as it sounds, but trust your gut. Trust your gut. Yeah, yeah. like know when something's not serving you. So why did, 
how did you know that it wasn't serving you? Well, I think, again, the money. The, the money, money tells a yeah. story, right? So was it kind of like, would you in your mind have a kind of rule of if you're not making it's a, a X, X amount of money, yeah. depending on the industry after X amount of time, and yeah. you put and cons- and assuming you've put an X amount of effort, yes, it's probably not quite right. Yeah, and I think if you're not feeling motivated to put in the effort for whatever reason, hmm. if like the core work isn't fulfilling, yeah, I think if you've got like these markers uh, available to you, like is this fun? Like, are you enjoying the work? Do you feel passionate about selling it? Um, you know, is the team working well? Like. You know, just like doing a really critical analysis, like what's the pros, what's the cons? Yeah. 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 Happiness. Yeah. Fulfillment. Yeah. I don't know. It is hard. It's it's interesting, eh? It really is. Yeah. And, and I don't I don't have the answers for this, but yeah. I just think that not enough people ask ask these questions. Though. Yeah. There was a point where um in my business where for six months I woke up every morning and I'm like, I can't do this for a single more day. I was just I hated it, um, but it was actually it was a workload thing for me at the time, right? Um, because uh, and, and actually it was a workload and money thing. Um, my overheads were way too high, and I was having to work sixty, seventy hours just to break even or less, you know. Yeah. And I think, like you said, like if you're working hard, uh, you should be getting rewarded for it. I've kind of got this rule now with in my business. I've got like a working capital amount. Anything over that I take out at the end of every month because if everything went tits up, I should be rewarded for the work that I've put in in that time. Yeah. Nice. But it's hard. Yeah. Hard to make the decision of like, because I'd be quite happy just piling everything back in as well. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Everyone's situation is so unique, but what I've uh, noticed is that there's certain business owners that are accidentally in business, like they just have found themselves. Fell into it, yeah. <laughs> fell into it through whatever yeah. reasons. But 100%. Um, yeah, I think some of those people, like they're, they're sort of getting the worst of both worlds. Like they're getting definitely, the, they're not getting the freedom or all the money, <laughs> market rate, you know. Yeah, and they're hating it. Yeah, and I so. think as well, bro, because like zero to one, like starting this super to be honest easy to get clients and easy to, really easy to be a freelancer and then every, everything else beyond that's just been murky and confusing and drains money mm. and um you sometimes the, and this is where we're kind of bringing it back to i think there's three ways to make money that's where it's where you really feel that or should i just freelance make a good amount of money and become free through investment yeah it's quite it's quite an appealing alternative totally. um and so you're probably in the same situation a little bit, right? Because you're trying to build this. Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. And that's where it's like there must be certain types of people who are wired a certain way to make that decision of fuck it. Mm. Like I'm just going to pile into this and figure it out, figure it out. Yeah. And you said that you've done it quite a while. Like before 90% of the time you've been self-employed doing things. Yeah. Why, why, why? Yeah, I don't know. It's um, interesting when you look back through like several generations and like um, DNA and like mm. heritage, you know, like, I don't know. I think that's maybe a part of it. Were you, was your family? D- Dutch, like, yeah. they, they they typically are not afraid of business. Yeah. Like they, was your family? From d- yeah, d- my dad was born in Holland. Oh, yes, yeah. So that um, that is potentially one element to it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I'm just wired this way. Mm. Blessing I or a curse. Explain it. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I just don't ever feel like when I'm in an employed role and maybe it's not, I just haven't been in the right one, but yeah. just don't feel like it's an equal alignment, right? Totally. Just don't feel like either I've been aligned with the company and willing, like I've always wanted more, right? Yeah. I've always wanted to add more value. Like I've always been value centered. Um, but I guess by default, a lot of people in employed roles are sort of there to get paid and that's it. Yeah. You know, it's different hards as well. Yeah. Like, I, I I was a bartender and um, worked in Hallensteins. Oh, and it was the like, bartender was actually all right, but I had a miserable time in Hallensteins to be honest. Not to not to bag on them or anything. Good company, <laughs> <laughs> um, but my manager just was quite horrible to me. Right. And I was eighteen at the time. Yeah. And um, yeah, she was even like in hindsight, I'm like man, she was 
really horrible to it's work no good. for. Just no good. Shouldn't be in, in any position where she's managing people, to right. be honest. Gotcha. And it was after that, I lasted three months and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, it was after that, I never had a job since then. Like a, an employed job yeah. since then. Because yeah, I just, yeah. she fucked me up. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, she yeah. messed with my head early on. Yes. Um, Which is a real shame, you know, like... By yeah. contrast, imagine if she was an awesome, awesome leader manager, yeah, and made the you know got out the best of you, totally. Like as a, and I thought I can thrive here or something. Hundred percent. Who knows where it would have led? That's what my belief is. Is mm. like so many people are underutilized, right? And oh, with the right yeah. set of leadership, management, coaching, like a lot of people could be fulfilling way more potential. Hundred percent, providing way more value. Way to society. more value. Like way yeah. more value. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I think exactly. it's yeah. I like it's kind of a. I, I, like you're going after what you want, right? And a lot of people are going after what they want. And I think people look up to them for that because it's like they're just chasing what they want. Like that's so cool. But that's, in my mind, like that should be the default to some extent. Like you're kind of depriving society of your potential yes. if you're not doing that. Agreed. Yeah. 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 100% agree. I don't remember who who was talking about it or what book it was in, but... It's that whole premise of like, if you want more money, if you want to get ahead, like just add more value, right? Like lean into whatever you're doing. Like totally. even if you're the the dishwasher or the glassy or whatever, like be the best one ever. Totally. You know, like just yeah. do everything yeah. you can. That's that. Yeah. I, I, in my younger years, I'd get in lots of arguments with people around capitalism and such. And yeah, it, I think as well, like a lot of younger people are kind of, Tilt like they see capitalism as kind of a bad thing, but I've always looked at it as as very much that if you you get rewarded by the value that you provide to society, and so these people that are insanely wealthy, it's because they've provided that or more value to society, because fundamentally as well, everyone acts logically, right? Like if you sell something for ten dollars, the person that pays you ten dollars sees more value than ten dollars in receiving it. Yeah, it's it's a win win. That's simple. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I think um, with more and more content being produced, I think that there's hopefully a shift happening. I hope that maybe like sort of Joe Bloggs that's in an employed role will maybe get inspired to, to do more and to be better and yeah. to work on themselves. Mm. Well, everything's accessible now as well. Very much you so. You know, yeah. like you can start a podcast on your phone. Yes. You know, anyone can do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. If there was ever a time to be able to get ahead and have the opportunities available it's yeah. now yeah i think i think you're right and i'd like to think that there's more movement toward this and i think with that will become more communities and more pockets of people that are doing better mm. hopefully mm. i think that'll have a net increase on the oh t- on society country and yeah. the world yeah do you think they talk about us moving towards a gig economy everyone kind of freelancing and contracting to each other yeah do you think that's a world where everyone will thrive I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. Mm. I, yeah, it's a good question. Mm. It's a bit like um, the universal base, basic income chat, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. Don't know. I'm, I'm not that smart. Mm. Yeah, it's, we- it's, it's a weird concept to think about, right? Even yeah. the difference between traditional roles and like, you know, in office, working from home, remote, even that I kind of struggle to com- comprehend, right? Yeah. I, I'm not a, what do you think of working from home? I hate it personally. I'm not a big fan either, bro. No. I can imagine if I had, if I had a huge corporation and everyone was wanting to walk from home, I'd be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I was at uni in my last year, I was playing with a bunch of guys. A couple of them had jobs. Yeah. And I know for a fact that they're working from home. Was they're, they're, They were in bed. They're not doing much. They're not doing much. No. Nah. But then on the other hand, like from what I can tell from LinkedIn, it seems like there's a really distinct set of people that that is like they've that that's it works what, for them they're demanding it and, right and yeah. they're working for them and like the company accepts it you know the leaders accept well i it. kind of feel like a lot of the, the companies and businesses and employers are being kind of strong-armed a little bit they've kind of been wrestled into a position that they're not Perhaps. comfortable with that's what it seems like to me on a society level i, I guess if you play this out a little bit you know, if you think of yourself as an individual, mm. like is showing up to a nine to five role mm. in a set space mm. um, with the set people, is that going to bring out the best in you? Depends on the role, of course. Yeah, it depends on the role, I think, right? Very much so. If I had, if I had 
responsibility in a, in a position. I was like, and I had a boss who was like, you need to have this sorted and these numbers need to thrive. These metrics need to thrive. You can work from anywhere. Um, I don't know, actually, when, when I say it out loud, I don't know if I would, if, a, if I would be able to work from home. Because I think maybe you need to be around in that environment to really feel motivated, even when you've got the responsibility. Yeah, I think that that is my big thing. Like, I just hate working from home. Like, I've never been into it. I've always yeah. disliked home offices. Yeah, COVID was absolutely brutal for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I guess if you play this out, like, because I guess with any argument or any debate like this, there, there is always two valid sides. Hmm. It's not possible for there just to be a right and a wrong. No, and so therefore the people that are effectively able to work from home and they are productive, maybe they're more productive than they are in an office environment. Mm. Plus there's the no commute, plus there's no uh, office expenses. So, you know, mm. there's two sides mm. to it. It's true. Do you think people work harder now or harder 30 years ago? Oh, that's a good question. If I think back to, say, my first job, so that would have been about 20-ish years ago, um, yeah, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I think, I don't know. What do you think? I think people worked harder. I don't know if they got as much done. Were they as productive? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think like now with all the technology, everything that we do is amplified. Do you know what I mean? It can be. Yeah. 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 If, if Like if you post a piece of content and 500 people see it, isn't that, that wild? Isn't that wild to you think? You would have had to have gone to the uh, to, newspaper ad. To a newspaper ad or stood in, this, in an assembly of 500 people yeah. watching you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We're in a changing time, aren't we? We are, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that, though. Like, I think, it, yeah, it just comes down to that measure of productivity, doesn't it? Mm. And that's so vastly different depending on the role. Mm. What was your first job? Do you remember? Uh, so, yeah, I worked for um, – well, I had a business in high school. So I'd had Really? I had a firewood business. Yeah. Firewood? What, so you cut up trees and just yeah, pretty much. off in bags? Yeah, that's cool, man. <laughs> so nice. Good. Wait, that's how you know that you're born and bred an entrepreneur, right, when you start one in high I school? I guess so, yeah. yeah. It was so good. Yeah. It's just like a simpler time, right? Yeah, yeah. So many lessons learned. Yeah. What yeah, was, I, what was you, you said you had seven, seven yeah. or nine. What, can, do you remember all of them? Yeah, 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 so definitely. Can you, yeah. can you list them for me? Yeah, so firewood was the first one. I then had a online retail uh, store selling DVDs. Oh yeah, back when that was a thing. Yeah, yeah. Blu-ray DVDs. Cool, yeah. Um, that was cool. And then um, it was around the same time that Trade Me brought out a different methodology for listing titles, and it just crushed us overnight. Yeah. It was yeah. the one where they could um, compare title by price. Oh, oh sorry, right. You could like search by by title. cheapest first. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, and so yeah. it sort of was painful but yeah. yeah i mean hey it was a good good learning yeah totally um i then had a taxi business right yeah so that was um that was me trying to out uber uber yeah <laughs> before uber <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah fixed pricing uh two yellow altezas which was quite distinctive really the yeah that's cool man yeah, it was yeah. cool yeah again a lot a lot of lessons learned back then um i then had a travel agency in canada Shoot. Um, that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, that had a lot of um, good good points to it. That was probably like one of my favourite businesses. Weirdly, why? Um, combination of like low uh, low overhead, high margin, nice perks. Yeah, and it was quite simple. It was really niche. It was really specialised. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like trying to do multiple services, and so it was yeah, yeah. it was ticking a lot of boxes. Cool. Um, I then had a uh, when I had the marketing agency, I also got into a few other things simultaneously. So mm -hmm. I bought into a printing business, right? Um, doing garments and apparel. Yeah. So that was um, wild. Something that I figured in my head at the time it made sense. You know, there'd be crossover <laughs> of customers. Yeah. Share yeah. resources. Yeah. Share yeah. offices. Yeah. How can this go wrong? Yeah. It went wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I also co-owned a preschool um, wow. around the similar time. Yeah. So that was that was quite a quite a wild ride, that one. I accidentally found myself as a shareholder in a preschool. Um, again, that was a, a really big learning curve, like probably the most amount of staff. I think we had like 20 or so on the payroll at, at that time. 
Um, so combined with the 10 or so from alt and then like preschool and then COVID happened. So that was That's a lot pretty of, wild. yeah, whoa. Um, That's hectic. Yeah, it was hectic. It's interesting because you don't, it, it's, you can, you obviously, you obviously really do love business because none of those things seem related. No. So you actually love the business and, and the process of actually building something, 100%. right? Then actually what you're doing. 100%. Yeah, yeah. wild. What do you, what did you like more service based or product based businesses? It's a good question. No, pre- no preference. No preference? No. No, mm. it really is the underpinning business that I'm into, right? Yeah. It's never that I've been any, yeah, passionate about any one of those specific things. But mm. I guess with coaching now, it's great because it gives me the ability to... Uh, you get a piece of every, everything, oh, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. it's um, been really cool to be able to bolt on these other things as well. So like the events and the podcast sponsorship and mm. just having all these things that all sort of operate in the same vector. Totally. And they aren't wild and random. Yeah. So you, do they, all these things kind of connect in your mind? A hundred percent. Yeah. They're all part of the same thing. I guess what I didn't anticipate was this community element, which has started to emerge. Right. And it's a group of people that are all similarly motivated. They're all in business. They're all like, wanting to grow, they like yeah. a good time. It's really cool. Mm, mm. It's cool to be able to bring people like that together. Totally. Through the yeah. events, through the community. Where, so, yeah, where do you think that primarily that, commu- that you said that community has kind of emerged? Where is it primarily emerged from? What what avenue? A big part is through IHF Health yeah. Club and then the podcast is connected yeah. to some of those people. Cool. Um, yeah, that would be, be the... Two things essentially. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Which is funny because I never really anticipated the gym to be like a source of business or a right. But such a cool community in there, right? Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's like this uh, flywheel, right? It's like you go to the gym, you meet people, then you do podcasts, and then yeah, and then you do business. <laughs> and then because it's like health focused, like I'm feeling good, and then the food's good, and totally. it's just like you sleep good, and it's yeah. just like this. It's an ongoing effect, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's good, man. Exactly. Sweet. Was there anything else that you wanted to touch on or anything? Well, I'm just curious to know the uh, the journey of this podcast. My, my thing was... What the vision is... The vision was, I think the one thing I've, I've really been focused on with having a service-based business is leverage because um, the only leverage that we can get is when we hire more people and it's very slow as advice to a product-based business where you can put money into advertising or something. So I just think building up tools of leverage like an audience, um, it's just super beneficial for anything. And if it's tied to me as well, it's quite helpful. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Um, it is purely selfish reasons in all honesty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this just seems like it opens up opportunities as well. Totally. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. have you found that? You've probably found that with your podcast that things of opportunity has come from that. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a um, a resource and an asset. Mm. It's definitely something that has probably given me a lot more than what I've put into it, if I'm honest. Mm. You know, like I think the way that I've got it um, produced now, it's pretty pretty seamless. Yeah. And yeah, the amount of random people I've met and mm. like positive feedback, like the stories have been really cool, like people listening to it and taking action and doing stuff. Like I had this one um, lady that was in a job, she was unhappy and – Listen to one of the James Wallace episodes and mm. like quit her job the next day. Really? Yeah. So oh that man, pretty, that was pretty cool. Have you told James that? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good, yeah. good. 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 Yeah. So that happened, and then yeah, she, I think. Sorry, actually, I think she got a new job and then quit. So yeah, I don't think yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, hey, yeah. we're not encouraging. <laughs> we're not going to split here. Reckless, <laughs> reckless behavior here, but yeah. you know, I think that's pretty, pretty awesome. Right? That is cool. And then you know, like um, monetizing it through sponsorship, that's been cool as well. Just yeah. To, so. That's something actually I did want to ask you about. Uh, yeah. How does that? How did you go about doing that? Did you have to like go to potential sponsors and then have analytics and kind of use the data to? to <laughs> no, no, it just happened organically. Not at all. No, I mean I I started with uh, Tom Hardy, mm-hmm. Hancock Group. So he was inquiring about. He just inquired about it. Oh right, cool. Yeah, he yeah. Just, he just asked about it. And yeah. I was like, all right, well, let's just make it happen. So sweet. Figured out a rate that we're both happy with. Yeah. And, um, and then it was just before Christmas that I really wanted to do something with IHF, like just based on my love of the facility yeah. and just, you know, 
I'd met Dan at that point, but didn't know him super well. Mm. Um, so I was just like on a mission, right? I was like, all right, I've got to make this happen just yeah. before Christmas. So mm -hmm. we sat down and figured out a deal just before Christmas cool. um, 2023. So it's crazy how that's only yeah seven, eight months ago. Yeah, but, hectic. Um, yeah, and then just adding on uh, the others after that. So yeah. I'm, I'm sort of at capacity now. I do get um, the occasional inquiry mm -hmm. about sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So. So it's, but it's happened quite organically. You haven't had to advertise it or you haven't had to go out and hunt for leads. It's just sort no. of like they've come to you. No, that's right. That might, that's, that's probably quite a good indicator that, you're, that, that what you're talking about is resonating with people. I think so. You know? Yeah, I think it's one of those things that could be enhanced further. I could be doing a better job of like the activation of the sponsors and mm -hmm. making it even better. Mm. Um, so that, maybe that's something to work on. Yeah. Yeah, because you just you never know where these things will go, right? No. Like, yeah. I've heard of a few conversions happening uh, for a couple of the sponsors as awesome. well, which is nice. Yeah, good. Because it really makes it a no-brainer. Yeah, totally. And it validates yep. the, the value. Yep, 100%. Um, reckless as it may be, I don't really focus on the data side of it, like the um, analytics side of mm -hmm. the podcast. Mm -hmm. I guess as well, like, I mean, the, the, would, you, would you say that there's a type of person that listens to your content? Is there an avatar? I wish I I wish I knew more about that. Yeah. I feel like there's definitely a cohort that are younger people, like in their sort of twenties, early twenties. Yeah. 20s. yeah. Um, but yeah, I I don't have a lot of information on that. Mm. I feel like there's probably people that are in my um, circle, like people that I know that listen to it. Yeah. But then I mean, are you in an e echo chamber kind of thing, right? But but then there's a whole bunch of other random downloads, like yes, yeah. you know. Well, like I said before, my friend who's I, I don't necessarily would be. Oh, she. I mean, she runs a business and stuff, but um, yeah, like she's outside of your circle, hasn't met you, but mm. knows your podcast. Guido, who you met the other day, we talked about your podcast, and he mentioned you before I did. Right. So people who you don't even interact with are watching it. It's crazy, it's right? A, it must feel kind of weird. Very weird. Yeah. I was at a party recently, Ash, and someone came up and uh, just said, oh, I think I listened to your podcast. Yeah, yeah. Showed, showed Best feeling out, ever. Showed me out on his phone. I was yeah. like, oh, that's cool. Oh, right. Like, yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was, it was cool. It was like kind of a weird feeling. Yeah, because you obviously went with, with Graham a bit, right? Yeah. yeah. So when I first met Graham, he came up to me. He's like, oh, do you own Legato? And I was like, bro, you could not have said anything better. <laughs> Ever since then, I think he's the coolest guy, bro. Like, yeah. he, he just made me feel so, so good. Totally. So he's a cool guy. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's the that's got to be the best feeling, right? Is when when you get recognized for the hard work and yeah. something that you're growing. You put well, in. I think especially now that I do have almost 150 episodes under the belt, I think people are starting to look at that and be like. Pretty, yeah, pretty it's solid. substantial. It's yeah. a solid commitment. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it's, it's kind of like what it's representing now. Yeah. It's almost bigger than the content itself. Totally. Were there points in that of like, oh, after episode 20, I found my groove and after episode 50, I, you know? Not really, not no. Really. No, Just I got through the first 10, which was the first commitment. Yeah. I committed to 10 episodes. Yeah. And then I... I think I committed to another 10, so I got to 20, and then I was like, all right, no, this is pretty good. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rhythm now. I yeah. can definitely keep on going. Yeah. So that first 10, you had, had drawn a line after 10 saying you're going to reanalyze? Yeah, exactly. So when you reanalyzed, what was it that made you think, I'm going to do another 10? Uh, mostly about happiness and yeah. how, how it made me feel. Like, did I look forward to it or did I dread it? Yeah. Really just that simple. Nice. Yeah. Um, I feel that the last sort of 30, 40, 50, like around that 100 – after the hundredth episode, it's been a bit weird, just in terms of like, um, I don't know. It's just, I guess, with coaching taking up a lot more time and energy, it's just something that's it's happening. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not necessarily consciously right. It's hit that point where it's kind of rolled over, and now it's just it's a bit it's building. You don't have to push it so much. It's a bit right? murky. It's a bit like it's just this thing that's happening, and it, yeah, and maybe that is an area of improvement. But right. Oh, uh, exciting, yeah, I think bro. It's good. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, keep on going with it. I look forward over the years to keep watching what you're doing, bro. Totally. Because yeah. it's it's looking it's looking promising, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, think, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, man. You work you work hard, bro. You work really, really hard and I respect um your analytical mind and the way that you can break things down and really just you you practice what you preach. I think that's really cool. Yeah. So um we'll wrap up there. Cool. But Thanks for coming on, bro. Thank you very much for having me. It's a super exciting honor to be guest number one. Hey, so. Thank you. Thanks, Jack.